Okay, so this is a recording live at the moment, and if I walk backwards, you can just hear Okay, the sound so now shot. it's the evening, and this is night vision on the camera. Hi there, today we're unboxing an indoor Wi-Fi IP camera. So this particular one is by HomeGuard. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So let's have a quick look around the packaging. So it comes nicely packaged in a glossy box. Picture of the actual camera here. Some details down below. So full HD resolution, pan and tilt, two-way audio, night vision, motion detection. Supports micro SD cards up to 128 gig has push and email notifications together with smart access. Okay, come around here, just some pictures and some details here some on the specification and gives details of the app to use. And there's some more details we've already mentioned. And that's it. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging, so let me quickly go through them one by one. So you've got a quick start guide, which is multi-language, and flicking through the instructions, they seem very clear and looks very straightforward to set up. Okay, next you've got a CD, and this contains some software and an instruction manual on there. Next you've got two stickers, just saying protected by HomeGuard, 24 hours video surveillance. Okay, then you've got two screws and two raw plugs and they're used in conjunction with the actual mount for the camera and the way that works the camera has a small hole underneath you just screw that in and you can just put the screws into there and mount against a wall or a ceiling so that gives you the additional flexibility so you don't have to always just put it straight on a table for example and again once you've positioned it you can just tighten these and it will just stay in the same position. Okay, next we've got a power brick. Let me bring that up close just to give you an idea of the output. So five volts, 1,500 milliamps. Okay, next we've got a cable. And this cable is approximately 2.3 meters in length. Build quality is good, nice chunky cable on there. One end of the cable is USB and the other end is DC and build quality is very good of this cable. So they've given ample cable just in case. Okay, so one thing to note about the cable, I think they should have really given the connector to your camera being a type C or a micro USB, but no biggie at the end of the day. Okay, so next the actual camera itself. So nice compact design to it. So if I give you an idea with my ruler next to it, we're saying about 12 centimeters with a diameter of about eight. Build quality wise, tough plastic all the way around. You've got some branding there, if I bring it up, got a reset button just there slot for your micro SD card if I bring it at an angle you can see a slight hole and that's the microphone obviously the lens is there and if I come around here you've got the speaker okay looking over here you've got the actual DC connector point there so it just plugs straight in there and obviously it's pan and tilt so it is motorized if I show it can spin around Okay, looking underneath, you've got the actual mount point there for the bracket, and you've got four pads. So if you do put it on a table, it doesn't easily slide along. Just to show, it does stay reasonably well on the table. Okay, so that's the state of the camera. Quality-wise, it seems good, and a glossy white finish on the sides and up here. Okay, so next, let's insert a micro SD card into the camera. So I've got a 32 gig one here, and you just flip it around like so, and pop it into the gap, like so. Simple as that. Okay, so next, let's plug in the camera. So I've got the power brick here. If we take the USB side of the cable, plug straight in, and the other end, the DC power, goes straight into the back of the camera, like so. And I've got a power strip at the side here, and let me plug it in. Okay, and let's give it a moment. So you can see a red light has come on immediately. And let's give it some time. Okay, so now you can see a blue light flashing, so that's ready for a config. 
Okay, so let's make a start setting up this camera. So if I go to the Play Store on my Android phone, click here and search for HomeGuard, and it's the first app that's appeared at the top. So let's click on that. So it's HomeGuard Care, and let's click Install, and let's give it a moment. Okay, so now it's installed. Let's click Open. Okay, and it's asking to allow it to take pictures and record video. Let's click Allow, and it needs to access data on the device and location services for some reason. Okay, and record audio. So it's asking everything in one go. Okay, so the next thing to do is click Add Camera, and we want to pick Add Camera via Wi Fi mode. If I click that, and now it needs to scan in a QR code. So let me scanning the QR code that's underneath the camera. Okay, so now the QR code's scanned in, we now need to confirm the camera has a blue light flashing on the front, and let me just turn it around, it's still flashing away. So, let's click blue light is flashing slowly, and next it's asking for a name for the camera, so we can just type in, for example, camera one, and let's click next. Okay, next it's asking for my Wi-Fi password. So let me do that off camera. Okay, so I've entered in my Wi-Fi password. Let me click connect to Wi-Fi. There you go. Okay, so now the camera's set up. Let's make a start and have a look at the options available. So if I click on the camera, first option you see at the side is to just come out of it. So if I click it, it comes out. Let's go back in. Then you've got a menu option here and that allows you to turn off the LED or turn it on onto auto so at the moment it's on auto so the advantage of this is if you had it pointing out of a window if you turned off the LEDs you won't have the LED shining back at you in the evening so you can get footage from indoor pointing outdoor as long as there's sufficient light outside okay next are the options to flip the image so if I click there you see it flip round flip back again and the same again. Okay, so next you've got the cruise options. So if I click here, it starts cruising horizontally and this cruises vertically. And on the actual screen itself, if I move it like so, you can actually control it directly from there as well. So you don't actually have to uh, click the actual cruise buttons. Just to show, there you go. Pretty responsive as you can see. But obviously, just to note, I am on my Wi-Fi network. We're not doing this remotely. Okay, so next we've got a rotate button. So if I click there, it rotates the image. So it depends how you want to use the camera. You could either have it vertically or horizontally on your phone. Then you've got an option to take a picture. There you go, successfully taken. I hit this button, starts recording. Okay, so next you've got the audio on-off option. So I click there, there you can hear, and then you've got the microphone on off button, so you can actually talk to the person on the other end if you wanted. Then you've got a brightness option, you can adjust the brightness of the camera, take it up or down, and then you've got contrast, take that up, and let's take it back down again, and then you've got a reset to defaults option. Okay, so video parameters reset in case you've messed that up. Then you've got the actual resolution. If I click on that, you only got two options, 480p and 1080p. Let's shift it up to 1080p. Okay, let's move it a little bit. I notice it's a little bit blurred. Let's move the box back. The box is quite close. And there you go, gives you a better idea. Much clearer and picture quality seems really good. Okay, and that's all the options you have available from selecting the actual camera. Okay, so let's come out of that and see what you have available here. So if I click here, you can change the name. That's the actual ID of the camera, username, password. App receives alarm, so that's good. So you can get alarm settings coming to it. Advanced settings, so Wi-Fi. So you can change your Wi-Fi here. User management. You can add in other users onto this. Time settings, so set your time zone. So let's adjust it to the UK. 
Okay, and okay to that. Next, you've got alarm settings. So motion detect armed. Okay, so it should be able to detect motion. And these are the options you have. So alarm trigger event, save picture to SD card, save video to SD card. You can upload to an FTP server. You can link to other devices. I'm not sure if that would work with this. Uh, and speaker linkage. Okay, let's click done on that. Okay, FTP settings, so you can put in an FTP server details, mail settings, so you can get it email you when there's activity. Okay, then you've got SDTF card setting. So that's the card in there, and I can format as well if I wanted. So let's format it and give it a moment. Okay, so now it's formatted. Let's move on to the next option. Miscellaneous settings, OSD setting. So you can put the time and a name on there. So you could say the actual camera name. So if you had multiples, that'd be useful for that. Volume setting, mic and speaker volume. You can adjust that. Not seen that before. Okay, AC frequency. And let's go back from there. Maintenance, so reboot device, restore to factory default and about camera so you can get the firmware version of the camera okay and that's it now if i come over here at the bottom alarm so no no events so far so we've turned on motion detection so if i put my hand over it there you go if i drop down here you see an alert appear on your phone and there you go in the alarm log if i click there no action on there. Let's go back, take picture. Okay, there's pictures I've taken. Okay, so next is the records option. So if I click on camera one, you can see the locally initiated recordings from my phone. And if I click on SD card, I can actually see what's been recorded on the SD card in terms of alarms. Click on more, one key Wi-Fi configuration, and you've got about and exit as well. So that's all the options, very straightforward to set up and use. So next, let's turn off my Wi-Fi and let it jump on data. There you go, 4G's kicked in. Let's click on the camera again. Let's give it a moment, and there you go connected and if I go try doing some movement bit of a lag about a second or so second or two picture quality is actually quite good on this looking at a 1080p um, if I now take down the resolution let's see if that improves the actual lag time no, the lag's still about the same. So, sort of normal for a lot of these cameras, lag can be sometimes heavy. This isn't too bad, a few seconds. So, there you go. Can work remotely. You didn't have to enter in any sort of logon details for the camera. It's all cloud-based, so as you've connected uh, and set up the camera, it's just Okay, so as you can see, it works remotely. No need to open any ports on your router, all cloud-based connectivity, and not even a requirement to set up an account on your phone to their actual services. So great functionality there and very simple to use. Okay, so this is a recording live at the moment. And if I walk backwards, you can just hear the sound quality on there. It just gives you an idea what it's like at a certain distance. So I'm quite close now. And uh, moving away now, so at least you get an idea of how clear it will be. Okay, so now it's the evening and this is night vision on the camera. Completely pitch dark in the room at the moment. And I'll see if I can come across to see the quality of the image. It's fairly clear really is, so good picture quality in, in night vision mode. 
Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this indoor Wi-Fi IP camera. Very simple to set up and configure. Can work remotely as well, and you don't even have to open any ports on your router. Has pan and tilt options on there, two-way audio and motion detection as well. Motion detection works quite well because once it's picked up some motion, you get an alert push notification onto your phone, and you get a short recording showing the actual motion that's been detected. So there you go. Hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like and subscribe.